and I'm gonna give you my secret sauce, my little favorite little trick that I like to use in the uh, in the sequencer. So I found a little uh, glitchy sound that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna show you what I do. Let's uh, we we hold our shift button down just like normal. It's another tutorial time with Brad, and now here's Brad. That's me. Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about what I think might be my favorite feature on the LP1. When I first started using the LP1, I came from using Logic Pro, where I basically used quantization on everything, and the LP1 does not have any quantization built in, so I kind of panicked a little bit, but that's when I started using the Endless Sequencer. Last week I posted my 10 Minute Tuesday video, and over on Instagram, my dude at Pete Wonder commented something about how creative I must be to know the math on using the Endless Sequencer, and I don't really think that that's a good way to look at it, because I'm terrible at math. Like so bad at math that I like cried trying to figure out math homework when I was a kid. The way I look at the end of the sequencer is more like an invisible grid where I just count the squares and then check the box. When I'm creating music on the OP1, I'm using the end of the sequencer, whether it's for my drums, whether it's for my pads, whether it's for my bass, and even if it's for my leads and textures. So let's uh, take a look and see how I'm using the Endless Sequencer to program drums. All right, to go into the Endless Sequencer, you would hold down Shift, hit your little blue dot guy here all the way over on the right, and there it is, Endless Sequencer. Hit it again to select it, and you'll see here, you've got kind of an empty box with a number in it, and that's not really intuitive at all, but here's what you got. Up here in the top left, you've got your tempo. So you've got quarter notes, eighth notes, eighth notes, triplets, 16th notes, 16th notes, triplets, 32nd notes, and 32nd note triplets. I usually stick to somewhere here in the 16th and the 1 8th. Sometimes I'll go into the, the triplets, but usually I'm living in these houses right here. We've got the green knob that controls our swing. I typically like to make pretty swingy stuff, so I'm usually living somewhere in the 60s, and sometimes I'll drop it down into the 40s. And your white note, that's gonna control kind of like your preset patterns. And your red knob, that is your hold, and that controls the playback. You can go reverse, and you can go uh, randomized, and we'll talk about each one of those. All right, so you've got the number here in the middle, and this is when you start controlling the sequence. So to do that, you want to hold your shift button down and start pressing the keys. Once you do that, that number starts going up. And when you hold the key, it plays those numbers in order. So let's try to program a little beat. So to do that, you're going to hold the shift button and these arrow keys are going to help you navigate as well. I like to think of these as kind of like my hi-hats when I'm doing the kick and snare part of my drums. Because I do the hi-hats at a different step. We're going to hit our kick drum and that's going to be beat one. And then we're going to go forward and we're going to hit our snare. And then we're going to go forward again. And now we've got four notes. And now we're going to hold down our C here. Right? Now, our red knob is our hold, so we don't have to hold everything. So to make these uh, boring monotonous drum beats a little more interesting, what I like to do is mess with the LFOs. Right now, I've got the value LFO set up, and inside of here, we're messing with uh, the positioning of the actual sample graph that the uh, audio file is pulling from, uh, and that's changing at 75% uh, on the third notes. So what you're getting is this. And all I had to do was just do one, two, three, four, and I had this. So let's turn off the hold, and we're gonna record this. Then I would usually add some hi-hats or some sort of percussive element. Let's just stick to hi-hats for now. Now to do a hi-hat, you could just leave it as simple as like that. And we're going to play our drum beat. And that already sounds pretty good. All you have to do is hit one key and you're good to go. But just like the drums, that could get a little monotonous. So let's go into the value LFO again and see what we can do with that. There we go. And now I've got it uh, affecting the pitch of the hi-hat so every time it hits it's a little different. Go back into our tape mode and record. 
Boom. Now something else you can do while you're playing with this is you can shift the notes and it will affect the pitch. Now you can't really tell that much because we are already messing with the pitch. And that's how I would go about adding some hi-hats using the endless sequencer. But now we need to add some chords because what's a drum beat without some music to go with it? We're going to use these two chords. So this is kind of when uh, you start getting spider hands when you start messing with chords. So let's hold the shift button down and we're going to go. Just keep in mind counting in multiples of eight is going to be helpful if you can do that. 16, 24, 32, if not, just counting with these guys is, uh, is pretty helpful. All right, so let's go ahead and record our chord progression on top of our drums here on track one. All right, and after some uh, chords, you know, you usually want to add some bass. So I would hold my shift button down. Count to two, because that's when we start our snare drum. We're going to go... And play that along with our beat. We've talked about the basics on how to use the endless sequencer, and I'm going to give you my secret sauce, my little favorite little trick that I like to use in the uh, endless sequencer. So I found a little uh, glitchy sound that I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you what I do. Let's uh, we we hold our shift button down just like normal, but we're going to take uh, all of the notes that we're we've been using. So I remember we were here on these three, so we're going to start with this guy, and I'm going to hold him for two, and I'm going to move up, hold this guy for two. I'm going to move up, hold this guy for two, and we're going to follow that scale again. We're going to do, do, do. So we're going to go. This wouldn't sound like much when we play it long. But what we can do is when we hold our shift button, our orange knob, uh, we change it to randomize. Then what I like to do is add our uh, white knob into the mix. So when you turn him, we get all kinds of different salt uh, flakes here. I like to just uh, experiment and find some odd ones. If you hold shift, you can uh, go into fine increments, but don't touch any of the keys because then you'll reset your sequence. So just hold the shift key and move your knob until you find something that looks interesting, really. Let's try that out. You know, this is just where you, uh, I experiment a lot with this just to find weird grooves. I do this for almost everything and I always get something new. So. What I'm noticing here is I want to change the sequence a little bit because uh, that isn't really enough randomization. So we're going to go and we're going to hold the keys down for one, two, 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 one, two. And then we're going to do it again, but we're going to hold them down for four. And then I'm going to go through and do it for one. Now I've given the randomizer or however the algorithm works a lot more to work with. So it's going to throw our notes around quite a bit more. Every number is a new chance to hit a different note. So let's see what that sounds like. All right, I like the vibe of that. Let's go ahead and throw that guy down on track four. Now, typically what I would do from there is I would uh, tinker around with some other sounds and find a cool little lead to go around, but uh, I don't use the endless sequencer for that. So um, that's how I use the endless sequencer. Kind of feeling like they should come up with a lead now. 
All right. I don't know. That's about as good as I can do. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I think I covered the endless sequencer pretty uh, thoroughly, but if you have questions, hit me up in the comments below, or if you have any suggestions on how I might be able to use it better, hit me up in the comments below. Um, until then, uh, hit that like button. If you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more of this content uh, and all that stuff. Be good to each other, and I'll see you guys in the next one.